Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland. And if you're new to the channel, then you're very welcome. Today, we are going to have a look inside my greenhouse. Now, as most of you know, the greenhouse is used much as a show house in summer, where I showcase the different plants that are looking good then. And recently I made a big decision and that was to permanently plant up the border down one side of my greenhouse with tender plants that I can't leave outdoors in winter. So the planting is done and I can't wait to share with you how it looks now. A very good morning to you all and we are just about to enter into my greenhouse where I have some exciting stuff to show you. Plants in flower, plants looking good and very excitingly the greenhouse border newly planted up. This is my greenhouse staging just to the right of where we walked in and you can see there's no border there. These are all pot plants that look good in summer and I keep in here so I can come in and enjoy them. In terms of what's looking good now, our first mention is of pelagoniums. Of course, pelagoniums just flower all summer long. And this one here in front of us is called Amber Pearl. It's a pink one that's in bloom. And to the right, we have Rhodoxus, those little gorgeous bulbs, South African bulbs that are excellent for growing in pots. Oh, and then in the middle, we have an agapanthus, a tender agapanthus that is budding, even though it's a very, very small division. And then at the front, ah, we have cactuses in bloom. Look at this funny little fellow with his crown of flowers. Another cute cactus in flower at the moment is this little red fella here. A very, very reliable flowerer. Just a bit further over to the right, we have Compton's Carousel, which is in spike. And we have this glorious Osteospermum, which is in flower at the moment. And look at the beautiful yellow flowers. This was gifted to me by a school friend of my son and it's just a beautiful thing. So I'll be growing that in memory of my son Joshua. And we have Echeverias in bloom there. That um, Duchess of Nuremberg just keeps going on and on. Dudleya in flower, which is that white one. And down in the corner, we have a few more things. So the cactus on the left is an astrophytum and it keeps on flowering. It has lots of buds and flowers one after the other, but the flowers really last a short time. And last time I was in here, it was open or nearly open. As I came into the greenhouse, I did the rounds of the shelving. And when I looked back at it, it was withered up again. So you really have to be on the ball to catch this one. But astrophytums have such great shape that I think they don't really ever need to flower to look fabulous. And down from there on the floor, we have the pregnant onion, which I hope to make a separate video about. And this is my pregnant onion and she has a lot of, and she has several flower spikes at the moment. Can you see them? sticking up there with lots and lots of flowers. And moving over to the left, we have a couple of South African bulbs. So Buffon on the right. And Hymanthus humulus, which is just about to flower on the left. So this flower isn't open fully. It will make a ball shape when it's open fully. And this is one of the summer flowering hymanthus that I'm delighted to have in my collection. Okay, it's now time to move over to the greenhouse border and see what I've got in there. 
And first of all, I want to let you know that obviously you're looking through glass to the outside world where I have plants in waiting just to the right there. So that's what you see in the background. So just try and block that out. There's nothing I can do physically about it until these plants I've planted in the border get big enough so that they kind of block out that view. We have this beautiful tender lobelia here. And again, don't mind the stuff outside the greenhouse, but this will get really, really big and produce purple spires of flower. It's a first flowering for its sister plant here outside. And you can see that the purple flowers have kind of gone over all down below, but we still have some at the very tip of the plant. And at the very front, we just have a few little colorful things like this salvia that's just coming into flower, salvia patens. And the shocking pink flowers of this plant I don't know how you'd even describe this pink colour. It's just, there's something unreal about it. And uh, I love it. Behind we have canna musifolia because the leaves of this canna look like bananas, hence the name musifolia. And this will get to about five foot in time. Now it's a bit stunted this year, which is why it's so close to the ground but by careful care in this border, I'm sure it's going to get really big, if not this year, then next year. And I really look forward to having a tropical feel that this plant will give to the border. On the right there, we have a variegated small agapanthus that flowers so regularly, it's unreal. And you can see that it already has two spikes. I planted gingers in here as well and a few gazanias right at the very front. Now these were just bought to give an injection of colour and I love the orange brightness of them. The flowers close up when it goes dull in the evening but they are very very sunny and they have silver foliage as well which is always a plus. Behind the gazanias we have my protea which has remained pot in its pot buried in the ground and do you know what I think it's gonna flower again I'm not 100% sure but <sighs> these really do look like flower spikes so maybe that pruning I did, that experimental pruning I did, is paying off. Down at ground level, we have a variegated salvia. We have a very small canna called panache. That is a regular flower. We have some gingers behind and we have this little fella here, which is a great plant and just flowers for a very long time if kept moist enough. Now I've seen Justicia in other places and it does get really big if allowed. So I guess by putting it in the border, I'm going to allow it to get really big. <laughs> and over here in the corner, we have the giant tree dandelion. And now this has taken a bit of a blow because when I lifted it out this spring, its roots had gone down through the pot into the border and I had to rip them to get it out. And it's done very badly ever since. But I think now having planted it in the border, it should do well and hopefully it'll get going and give me masses and masses of yellow flowers like we saw in Helen Dillon's garden when we visited last year. Wasn't that a sight? And we have Bartlettina here just to the right of the protea. Now I think it's getting too much sun because some of the leaves have gone crispy. Um, these were ones that were overwintered, not the ones that grew this year. So it might be that it just needs a chance to acclimatize or it could be that it's getting too much sun. In any case, I'll keep an eye on it. And if it has to come out, well, do you know what? That's okay because I have other plants that will go in. 
and all of this greenhouse border was filled up with my own compost so this is stuff that was made from clippings in the garden now there'll be a lot of like poppy seeds and melanosalinum and all of the great things that i grow that self seed about and they'll be in here and they'll start popping up soon but you know it's nutritious stuff and they're easy enough to weed out and just a little word about my choice of plants to put here in the border because I do have a lot. I have a lot of plants that will grow really, really big, like the uh, mountain papaya, which is, of course, a tree, and some other things like the tomato tree, etc., etc. And it was very hard to decide what to put into the border that wouldn't completely get out of hand in time because what I didn't want was to have to kill the plant to get it out of the border when I found that its roots were getting too big and going everywhere. I have this problem a little bit with the Brugmansia and when I was planting up this border I could see its roots extending far and wide probably enhanced by the fact that I prune this very hard twice a year and of course when you cut off the top growth on a plant it encourages the roots to spread far and wide. I don't want it interfering with the foundations of the greenhouse so I will have to keep an eye on this going forward. The Trevisia as well was a plant I really wanted to put in the border feeling that it would do so much better if it were allowed to grow but I've seen how big these guys get and I balked in the end and decided not to put it in. So these are my choices. I hope that these plants will get quite big. The canna, for example, is, you know, it's a really good plant and I've seen it and I've had it grow quite tall from me to about four foot in the greenhouse in a pot. So it really needs to get to five foot in the border. And hopefully next year you will see that. Here in the corner, we have a crinum that I brought back from Madeira. Oh gosh, we're talking five years ago now. And I do hope that this year is going to be the year that it flowers. And a quick look at the plants on my greenhouse step, one of which is this fuchsia, which is now in flower. We have one cluster there. And if I can move further up, oh yeah, over there in the right, a second cluster. I have a couple of Dizas in flower as well. And this one is the hybrid called Menas Tan, which comes from Brittany and has this enormous orange flower. And a pink one. This is a very Barbie pink, don't you think? So that's it, a very brief greenhouse tour and just showing you my border newly planted up, which I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, so I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.